This is going to be another question and answer video. And we're going to talk about how do we know we have the right God? Somebody sent me an email. They said, when you're witnessing to somebody and they don't know that Jesus is the right God, what can you tell them? Now, the answers I'm going to give may not be good enough to satisfy the mind of a lost person like that who worships false gods from different religious backgrounds. It's not going to be good enough for a lot of them. I mean, there is faith involved, but these answers are good enough evidence for me, and they will be good enough evidence for a lot of them if you show it to them. God gave us some things to show us that He is the right one. And you hold the most amazing gift, the greatest piece of evidence, is something you're holding in your hand. He gave us a book. In Psalm 12, 6 through 7, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The Bible proves we have the right God. It's, it's still the most loved book and the most hated book at the same time. It's still the book you see in just about everybody's house. We have a book that can't be proved wrong. We have a book that shows you that the other gods are false gods. In Revelation 9.20, referring to uh, the tribulation time period, it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. So these false gods that the people in the world have, they can't see, they can't hear, and they can't walk. For example, Dagon, the false god Dagon, his worshipers had to set him back up in his place again. Can you imagine if you had to, had to set God up in his place? Can you imagine if God called you and said, I've fallen and I can't get up? In 1 Samuel 5, 3 and 4, it says, And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the, on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. I recently seen a picture of Hindus carrying their big blue God to save him from a flood. Isn't that something? Our God doesn't need saving. He does the saving. And we have a book that he gave us that shows us any God that we can get on this earth is pale in comparison to him. God said himself in Isaiah 44, 8, Fear ye not, neither be ye afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. God himself is looking around and he don't see a God beside him. Consider how in Exodus when God brought the plagues on Egypt, each plague represented the Lord being superior over all of the gods of Egypt. In Exodus 12:12 12, 12, it says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The very first verse of the book that he gave us says in Genesis 1-1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Not gods created the heaven and the earth. But the book that stands the test of eternity shows us that we have the right God. So he gave us a book to show us. And next he gave us a new song. When you got saved, you got a new song in you. In Psalm 40 and verse 3, it says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You see, little kids, big kids, grown-ups, old people, and all different people from different walks of life all gather together and sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine a little kid saying, Yes, Buddha loves me. Or yes, Allah loves me. Uh, God gave us a new song. 
Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the, to the Lord. Before I got saved, I couldn't imagine listening to psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. But after I was saved and I got in the Bible, that's what I love is psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs because of what the words are saying. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, the person who died on the cross for my sins. You know, you got a little kid and an old man. If they're both saved, listening to that same song and they both love it. You take a, an unsaved young person and an unsaved older person, they're listening to two completely different kinds of music mostly. But you've got born-again believers who love those same psalms and hymns and spiritual songs because of the right God that it's talking about. So he gave us a book. He gave us a new song. He gave us his blood. His blood. We have a God who shed his blood for us. The average false God wants you to shed your blood or your kid's blood for him. That is why they were making, that is why people were making their son or daughter to pass through the fire in the Old Testament. Romans 3.25 said, Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. God shed his blood for you. Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom, God, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1, 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. We have a God who shed his blood for us. The average false God wants you to sacrifice for them, even though they would never sacrifice for you. Jesus Christ made the ultimate sacrifice. He is God in the flesh. He is the right God. He gave us a book. He gave us a new song. He gave us his blood. And he gave us a hope. The fact that Jesus Christ got up out of the grave and resurrected is what gives us hope. None of the false gods resurrected. In 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 19, it says, For if the dead rise not, then is Christ not raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. You see, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. If he didn't, then your faith is vain. None of these other false gods rose from the dead, if they were even alive at one point, they're, they're dead now. But Jesus Christ got up. And the resurrection proves we have the right God. And you say, well, how can that prove it? Because we don't even know that it happened. Uh, we do have proof that it happened. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 6. Paul gives us the gospel. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now look at this. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So Paul says over 500 people saw Jesus in his resurrected body at once. He was seen of above 500 brethren at once. How many witnesses would you need to prove something actually happened? That's more than enough. For example, if just three people saw somebody murder somebody, you know, is that not enough proof that this guy murdered somebody? What if 500 people testified and said that somebody murdered somebody? I mean, how much more proof would you need? The resurrection proves we have the right one. 
Jesus said himself in Revelation 118, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and men have the keys of hell and of death. If you want to see evidence around you, then you will find that the world hates God. The world hates the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't hate the false gods of this world like they hate the Lord Jesus Christ. Who does Family Guy mock? Who does Saturday Night Live mock? Who does the world mock over and over again and laugh at? Time itself is split up showing that Jesus Christ is real and that he came, that God was manifest in the flesh. You have B.C., which means b before Christ. You have A.D., which means Anno Domini, meaning the year of our Lord. Time is split up, and it revolves around Jesus Christ. Consider all the Messianic prophecies in the Bible, in the book that God gave us, in the Old Testament. All the pictures and types. And Jesus Christ fulfilled them all. Consider how the book was written by different authors. In different periods of time. In different locations. And none of it's without error. And it was all preserved over the years. And still has so many, it has so many applications. The prophetical application. Doctrinal. Practical. You know the. Different people from different walks of life all get comfort from the same book. No other book is like it. And that book tells us who the right God is. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this may not be enough proof for the average person that you that believes in false gods. They're going to have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. But this, is, this was enough proof for me. And it ought to be enough proof for you if you're saved. But... They're going to have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ through faith. And I think these, just these few proofs would move them in that direction. If you showed somebody, if somebody said, how do I know Jesus is the right God? Just show them these few proofs that I gave you. And pray that it will convict their heart and make them see that Jesus is the only God.